When you hear death, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? I bet it's bad things like loan sharks or people knocking at your door at 3am and asking you where's the money. Well, what if I told you that not all debt is bad? Welcome to Modern Wealth, where in today's video, we'll be talking about one of the best debts out there, the mortgage. First, let's talk about our good friend Mark Zuckerberg. In July of 2012, Mark Zuckerberg financed his $5.95 million Palo Alto home. At the time, he was only 28 years old and considered the world's 40th wealthiest person, with an estimated worth of over $15.6 billion. So, the question now is, why would you get into debt when you have billions of dollars and can easily afford it? If he wanted to, he could easily buy a dozen $6 million homes in cash without batting an eye. So why get a mortgage? The answer is long and complicated, but in short, it's free money. It sounds ridiculous, I know. I mean, who would give you free money when you're already a true blue billionaire? Well, it all has to do with interest rates. As of recently, the inflation rate in the U.S. is 2.5 to 3 percent. So any money you borrow that is below the inflation rate is considered free money. Zuckerberg's mortgage rate is just a little over 1.05 percent. But it is adjustable, meaning that, based on the circumstances, the rate could possibly go up for one reason or another. If you do some quick math, the bank is the loser since the mortgage rate is below the inflation. Honestly, you don't have to be a genius at math to figure out the situation. For example, let's say you borrow $1 million at a rate of 1%. The average rate of return on the savings account is 2.4%. This means that even if you deposit that million dollars in another bank, you end up making $24,000 a year, while you only have to make a monthly payment of $10,500 to the bank that lent you that money. Imagine if you do that with a hundred million dollars, or how about a billion dollars? When you can borrow for free, there's no point in tying up your own money, since you can use that money for more profitable things. Of course, when we're talking about small amounts of money, this might not make sense, because the difference isn't that big. However, when it comes to large sums, playing around with one, two, or half a percent could potentially mean thousands of dollars, if not hundreds. Let's say you're a businessman, and you can easily afford a million dollar house. Why buy a house when you can finance it for 1 or 2 percent, while you invest the rest of that money in your business that could potentially get you 10, 20, if not 30 percent returns? Even if you're lazy to find a more profitable way to use money, just throwing it all away into an index fund could spell more profit, especially when we're talking about 20 or even 30 years. Historically, an index fund has shown to have an average return of 8%. If you take a mortgage and invest your money in an index fund, the percentage difference will end up in your pocket. All of this comes down to opportunity cost. If we were talking economically, it wouldn't make sense for Zuckerberg to buy the house in cash when he's been offered a 1% mortgage rate. But he isn't the only one who is smart enough to do that. Take Elon Musk for example. Most of his wealth is tied to Tesla and SpaceX. To be able to buy a house for $20 million, he might need to sell a considerable chunk of his wealth, pay taxes, and incur other expenses. However, he can take free money and keep his monthly payment under his budget. He took out a $61 million mortgage for five properties in California with a monthly payment of $180,000. That's not unique to billionaires and is actually also practiced by moderately rich people like Jay-Z and Beyonce. 
They took a mortgage to buy their $88 million house. They put 40% down payment and financed the other $52.8 million. That leaves the couple with $149,600,000 monthly payment. To put this into perspective, the national median home value in the U.S. is $200,700. Instead of tidying $53 million in a house, he definitely knows where to invest it and how to maximize his profit. And at the end of the day, he's made a lot of great investments and is on his way to becoming a billionaire. Before we continue talking about these uber billionaires, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Also, let us know your thoughts about mortgages and whether the debt is good or bad in the comments below. Now, back to the video. The richer you get, the better ways you can find to make more money. But let's be honest, not everyone gets such a low mortgage rate. Nationwide, it's around the price where the average person can finance it. But let's answer this question first. Why do the super rich get a lower rate than the rest of the country? First of all, when you're a billionaire, the bank can sleep calmly because no one is worried that you might default on your loan. And in case something happens, you can easily sell part of your business to pay back your mortgage. That takes the risk out of the equation. Compare that to an average employee who could get sick and not be able to work for a few days or outright just lose his job. Secondly, paying your mortgage on time every month helps you build and maintain a healthy credit score. If you find yourself in some trouble next time, with a strong credit score, it will be much easier to borrow money from the banks. With these, you are basically building trust between you and the financial institutions. But it could also be the other way around. Banks do offer such a low mortgage rate to establish a strong relationship with rich people so that when their companies would need a loan from a bank, they would come to them and not their competitors. It's a win-win situation. However, these low mortgage rates are adjustable, which means, as I said earlier, they could go up. But no one is worried, because if it stops making sense, economically, to these ultra-rich people, they easily can pay back their mortgage. Although it sounds like a dream, there's a good reason that most people associate that with something negative. That's because we usually borrow money that we can't afford for entertainment and end up paying a lot more back. In fact, right after getting out of college, you realize what a burden your student debt is, and once you calculate how many years you have to pay back that debt, you immediately create a perception that debt is bad, especially when you can't even default on it. And these negative feelings are completely natural. I mean, playing around with debt is not easy, since you're eventually taking a huge risk where a small miscalculation can lead to disastrous consequences. In fact, there's been so much debt going around that a majority of people can't even afford anything unexpected like emergencies. However, that's what distinguishes bad debt from a good one. Debt can ruin your life, make you homeless and cripple your family if you're reckless. But it can also make you unbelievably rich if you know how to use it. This is known as leverage. Leverage is a superpower that can make you rich instantly. Let's say, as an example, you buy this phone for $10,000. You go to the market and sell it for $11,000. Congratulations, you just made a profit of $1,000. However, that's not much. Some creative people think, what if you use leverage, go to the bank first, borrow $990,000 with your additional $10,000, and that'll be a million dollars. You then head to your supplier and buy 100 phones, now for a million dollars, turn around and sell it to the market for $1,100,000. But it doesn't exactly stop there. You still owe the bank, so you return to the bank and return them the $990,000 that you borrowed and another $10,000 in interest. Now, you are left with $100,000. After you deduct your own $10,000, 
you are left with $90,000 of pure profit. That's how you make money when you don't have money. The bank made their share of the profit and you made yours. Of course, when you take this formula to the extreme and it isn't regulated by the government and practiced by everyone in the Wall Street, it turns into a financial crisis. For those of you who remember, something similar has already happened in 2008. Remember when home prices crashed so bad and then the banks took down the entire economy? Well, it's because the investment banks used leverage to maximize their profit to the point where their strategy backfired. It's all because of the fatal mistake they made when they began giving mortgages to people who didn't necessarily have the best credit score and weren't financially prepared to make the monthly payments. Then, they defaulted on their mortgages like madmen. It was a nightmare for the investors because for the last 40 years, home prices were rising and suddenly, they were going down. Well, we're not going to get into the details of the 2008 financial crisis, since that's a story for another time. Anyways, mortgages are still a major tool in how rich people make money. Of course, like a lot of good things, it's risky and you can end up losing everything. But if you know what you are doing, you can probably make a fortune overnight. I understand that when you hear the word debt, only the worst things come into your mind. But sometimes, there are such things known as good debt, one of these being mortgages. If you come across a good deal, I definitely recommend looking into it a bit more. Just remember to be sharp but open-minded and always know what you want and what you're looking for. I mean, these loan sharks and evil bankers can't touch someone who is completely sure of his or herself. Again, if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and if you want to learn a few more tips and tricks to handling your money or your money making skills, make sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers!